According to that pretty lady from the band Poison, every rose has a thorn. And similarly, every trip has some packing. Packing is a part of all travel, whether it's for vacation or business or jumping bail. And the crazy thing is, you're, you're probably, probably doing it wrong. According to Statista.com, we take 4.7 leisure trips a year. And in 2013, US travelers took 444.5 million domestic business trips. That's a lot of peanuts. You are not kidding, brother. And you'd think with all that practice, we'd be better at packing. And yet, without fail, we always end up behind some guy who has to transfer items from one bag to another just to drop weight, because he doesn't know how to pack right. Why would you bring your tennis racket to Alaska, buddy? And running shoes? You don't run at home. Why would you go running in Atlantic City? He's running from something, I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah. The struggle is real, guys. In 1153, the first wheeled luggage appeared in Palestine during the Crusades, and it was used to carry weaponry and equipment. It's not commonly known, but all soldiers fighting in the Crusades were allowed only one rolly bag and one personal item and only axes that could fit under the seat in front of them. Terrible. 700 years later, in 1854, two big things happened. First, Louis Vuitton luggage was born, and second, Creepy looking guys in New York started selling fake Louis Vuitton luggage out of the backs of their vans. Buggies. We talk about buggies? Not a wagon. Not a wagon. Not a wagon. We talking about buggies. Fast forward now to 1987, when the New York Times tells us that the first rollerboard as we know it finally rolled onto the scene when Northwest Airlines pilot Bob Plaff became the first person to carry wheeled luggage with an extendable handle. Actually, the rolling luggage technology had been conceived in 1970 and patented in 1972 by Bernard Sadow, but the technology, like most flights from Chicago O'Hare Airport around Christmas, didn't take off. So Bob Plath is widely credited with the rolling technology we see in airports today. And you know the luggage was good, because whether it's Bob or Sylvia, no one knows more about baggage than the Plaths. Boom. And Bob's bags got us to where we are today. A nation of travelers overstuffing our carry-ons and complaining about baggage fees. Okay, let's get into how we're doing it wrong. First up, packing under the influence. Now our friend, comedian Dave Attell, once famously said, and we're paraphrasing here, that you should never pack when you're drunk. You'll end up with a Hawaiian shirt, no pants, and a snorkel. Next big mistake, ignoring empty space. When you pack your shoes into your luggage, take any underwear, t-shirts, or socks you'll be bringing and stuff these into the shoes. Padding shoes, it's not just for Tom Cruise anymore. Another mistake is packing in a way that causes creases and wrinkles in your clothes. This can be solved by using the bundle method. First, you make a core out of some socks wrapped inside a t-shirt. Then combine your internet with your cable and your phone, and boom, you're bundled. Can I finish? Yeah. Then lay out your clothes flat, one on top of the other. Once you've done this, place your core in the center of your pile, and then wrap each layer around the core until you're done. And yes, it kind of makes you look like a serial killer but it packs it in. Note that there is an order to how you should stack your clothes. Jacket, longer skirts and dresses, long sleeve shirts, short sleeve shirts, pants, sweaters and knits, shorts. We call this the Paris list. Mm. Start with a jacket in Paris, France, and end with some jorts in Paris, Texas. That's the way we do it. Lastly, it's not always about the things you do bring on a trip. Many people aren't bringing the right things, and a great item you may not think to put in your bag is more bags. Yes, we're giving you license to get a little hoardery. We're not saying collect a thousand rabbits and let them breed within your walls. Nobody said it was cool to do that. No, we're saying throw a few extra bags in there for your dirty laundry so you can separate soiled or smelly items from the rest of your clothes. Think of it like a colostomy. A bag can make all the difference in the world. So use these tips and you'll have more room, nicer clothes, and maybe a visit from Matt Paxton from Clutter Cleaners. He's a great guy, we know him. Let me just say Why that we love you, the guy. He, I, he knows that we love the guy. I wanna say that we love the guy. Great guy, beautiful wife. Why would you say he's got a beautiful he wife? He would admit that he has a beautiful but wife. But he can say it, it's creepy when you say it. For Randy, I'm Jason. For Jason, he's Randy. You're doing it wrong. It is creepy, I'm sorry. It is totally You're doing creepy. It wrong. Matt Paxson's wife is beautiful. I'm sorry. It's still he weird. He will say that. It's he, weird for you to say he admits it, though. It but it up. is still creepy for you to say that his wife is beautiful. So can I say that he says his wife is beautiful? Yes. According to Matt, his wife is more beautiful than he is capable of achieving. That's in his right. Life. And he's capable of achieving a lot. Yeah. Did I overstep a bound there? Yes. I did. Ah. Ugh. Next time on, you're doing it wrong.
So with all these misconceptions about how a person gets the hiccups, it makes sense that so many crazy remedies are out there and a lot of them are wrong. We're talking about classic folk remedies like scaring the hiccups out of someone. Hiccups aren't teenagers you're trying to keep out of jail.